criteria. The Commons promotes collaboration, socialization, and acceptance of all students. At East High School, we embrace diversity in all of its forms and celebrate our individual uniqueness through clubs, cultural celebrations, and activities. Our goal is to make all students feel welcome and supported. One of our greatest challenges is to ensure that the academic rigor is keeping our students engaged in learning, as well as guaranteeing that all students are successful. The music department had over 10 all-state music selections. 177 students, or 68% of our students last year, graduated with a, Re a Regents Diploma with advanced designation. Diploma, uh, I'm sorry, Diploma with Advanced Regents Designation. East High School had eight National Merit semifinalists and 12 National Merit commended students. Parental involvement in education is paramount to the success of your child. I encourage you to continue your involvement throughout your child's high school years by joining the PTSA and becoming an active member of this worthwhile organization. At East, we realize the value of cultivating positive, productive, working relationships with parents and believe they are a vital part of our school community. Please know that if you have any questions during the next school year, that you can ask them at any time. I look forward to working with you for the next four years and our partnership working together. For our private school students, there are red folders, registration packets that are in Student Street Hallway outside of the auditorium. At the conclusion of tonight's presentations, you will be able to tour the building, a self-guided tour until about 7.30. Uh, and the administrators and counselors will be available as well as our elective teachers to answer any questions that you may have. At this time, I would like to introduce our PTSA president, Mrs. Lisa Lestumbo. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, I'm just going to speak about um, the important but sometimes unseen things that the PTSA does for students and teachers at the high school and some different ways to get involved. Um, the PTSA gives money every year to all grade levels to help with their fundraising efforts. We support various school events. Um, we have several events for our seniors, as well as some scholarship opportunities for the seniors. Um, we hold a staff appreciation um, luncheon in May to honor the amazing staff that we have here at East. We also have funding for teacher endowments. So far this year, we have contributed to the English, science, art, and music departments, as well as several of the clubs offered at the school. You will see us selling East Apparel, mostly online, but sometimes we have in-person sales opportunities. Um, one important thing that we do is the PTSA runs the school store, uh, which is open daily for the students. The store is our biggest fundraiser and raises enough money to support most of our programs. Because of this, we need to do very little additional fundraising, which is great. Um, we do rely on volunteers to work shifts at the school store during the day. It's really one of the best PTSA opportunities that we have for parents. Um, the students love the store, and it's a great opportunity for the volunteers to interact with students and just feel like a part of the school community. Um, as far as other ways to get involved, there are different options and levels of commitment that you may or may not want to take on. Um, first is joining the PTSA in the fall. Um, it's $10 per person, and it's quick and easy to do. Um, those dollars go towards helping with all of the programs that I mentioned earlier. Um, and also, higher membership numbers just show our strength as a school and PTSA partnership. Um, attending meetings is another way to get involved. We only have about five or six per year. Um, our administrators attend every meeting and are happy, happy to answer any questions or address any concerns. Um, it's a great way to form a connection with the school, which is especially helpful for our new families, but it's also important for our returning families. Um, we do need volunteers to chair committees. Um, many people choose to take on roles with a friend. Um, some committees require just a small amount of work, and some are a bit more involved. Um, 
We find ourselves in the position now um, where many of our volunteers are about to have their youngest child graduate. So we will have a lot of roles to fill next year. So hopefully we can fill them to keep all of our programs running. Um, and there's also an option um, to join the executive board. Um, since we don't have as many events as the elementary and middle schools, it's really, um, it's not a lot of work. We're pretty low key, easy going and have fun doing it. So um, we hope that in the fall that you will consider supporting us in some way, because whether it's big or small, um, your support benefits all students. Thank you. And with that, we are going to begin our presentations. Each of our elective departments uh, has their time and their schedule to go through and give you information on their departments. And again, um, our private school students, registration packet out in Student Street. And at the end of the night, please make sure that you do take that guided tour and walk around the building and ask any questions that you may have. So thank you, sit back and enjoy the, low, uh, the world language departments up first. I'll get it for you. Oh, thank you. I'm getting all this help, look at this. Okay, thank you. There it goes. Hi. I feel like I'm behind this thing. Hi, my name is Lorena Wager, and I am a world language teacher here at East. I teach Spanish and French. We also have Latin. I do not teach that, but we have three languages here. So welcome. Thank you for spending your part of your evening here with us. I will try and make this short. So here's just a little thing. Just hello, benvenuti, benvenu, welcome, ciao. You know, guys, this is, they're so mean to me. No, <laughs> it's not working. I can just click on here. I don't need that. It's okay. Okay, so this screen just tells you a little bit about why to take a language in high school and to continue. So you start your language in fifth grade, right? And you're taking either Spanish or French through middle school. Then when you start here at East or the other schools in our district, you are, have the option of, continuing with your language that you've been studying, or you can start another language. Um, and these are just some of the benefits of learning a language, right? It helps you with work and business as you get older. It introduces you to new cultures, right? It opens up your eyes to accept people from all over the world, different types of people, different languages, different cultures, different customs. And of course, it does help with the travel. Right? So you can go to anywhere in the world, and it does open up study abroad programs as you get a little bit older. We have three to choose from. You, we have French, Francais, we have Spanish, Espanol, and we have Latin. And I'll just say it, Latin, because I don't know how to say Latin in Latin. So if you are studying French or Spanish now at, in middle school, you have this wonderful option of continuing with one of those, or what I think is great, you can start fresh, new, it's a new day, it's a new school, and if you know what, maybe French and Spanish wasn't for you, you can change and take Latin. And we have a lot of students here that do. And that's just a wonderful option that you can do that. And if you want to take both languages, French and Latin, or French and Spanish, or Spanish and Latin, you have the opportunity to do that as well, right? So that's a really nice option. And we have lots of clubs here, too, that we have a French club, a Spanish club, a Latin club, and we have an Italian club. As one guess who does the Italian club? I know, very hard to 
to know because I talk with my hands. So we have lots of different opportunities for you to enjoy languages and use them in your class and learn all about the people, the customs, the cultures, the country of these languages and Italy as well. And there's other ones too. I'm just saying the ones that we advise in our language department. There's lots and lots of clubs. So here's a little breakdown of what you will be taking. You are going to come into the, into the high school either in a two regions class or a two A class. The R stands for regions, the A is accelerated. If you are in the two R track, as a freshman, your sophomore year, you're going to take the three regions. Okay. If you are in the A track, as a sophomore, you're going to take the checkpoint A, which is the one on the right. That's when you take your Regents exam. It's a local exam, but you'll be getting Regents credit for that exam. If you are on the A track, if you are on the R track, you still get to the same place, you just take an extra year, and that's okay, right? So you're going to take comprehensive, so the comprehensive and the 3A is exactly the same thing, okay? So you'll take that. Then your sophomore, or your, um, I'm sorry, your senior year, you would take 4A, okay, if you are in the comprehensive track in the left side. And if you are taking the A track, you're going to continue with 4A in 11th grade, and then you have the opportunity of 5A or AP. We are new this year is a new step program, and that is a collaboration we have with Niagara University. And we have that in the World Language Department as well as other departments here in our school. And it's a great opportunity that I know you're freshmen, but it's something to think about, almost freshmen, to think about to stay with the language. And when you get to 11th grade, you have the opportunity if you maintain, I believe it's an 80 um, grade point average in the language, you have the opportunity to get three credits towards college, which is huge because those of you that have students in college know how expensive it is to take a college class. And this opportunity for them as a parent of three students that went to this school and nieces and nephews who've all graduated and are now in their 20s is a game changer because it saves you money, it saves your kid money, and it looks really good on the resume. So they're able to get three credits as, as juniors, and if they would like to continue, they can get three more credits going into college as a senior. If they'd like to go to the AP, which is the advanced placement, which is a college course, at the end of that year, they would take the exam as well. And we offer that in all three languages. And I know it's early, but you do have to kind of start thinking when you make that schedule, what, what are you going to be doing? Where are you going to be going with it in the future? Okay. Um, this, we also have a national honor society for every language. We have one in Spanish, French, and Latin. Each language honor society is a national organization, not only to recognize high achievement in the language, but it also focuses on promoting the learning of that language and spreading its culture and its history. Requirements to apply. So you have to maintain a 90 grade point average over the last three years in the language, an 83 overall cumulative in all your other classes, a 90 for your language. So that means we take your one hour from eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, the first two marking periods of ninth grade, of 11th grade rather, we average all that all together, and then you're, you know, you, that is one of the qualifications. You, the kids right now, their junior year, are applying, and they'll know by end of February, beginning of March, if they are accepted, and it's a really nice opportunity to get recognized for all those years of language. I know there's like a, I think they have like, I used to teach a transit, so they do have some kind of honor society for eighth graders, I believe, when I was there. I don't know if they still do that, but it recognizes them for the achievement, for high achievement that they've been doing, and it's nice. They wear the stole at graduation, so it's something to think about, and that's it. So thank you. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you for coming again. Hello, 
I'm Jen Kluzinski. I am a member of the Engineering and Technology Department here at East. And I'm going to talk to you about the Design and Drawing for Production course, as well as the Multimedia One course. So Design and Drawing for Production is our intro level course that will satisfy the art music graduation requirement. We do things like CAD, sketching, building. Um, we look at utilizing 3D printers. So kind of an extension of what you may have already experienced in your middle school tech classes. So some of the big projects that you're going to see with our design and drawing for production class. Okay, on the top left, it kind of looks like a puzzle there. It's because it is. It's a pop-out puzzle. This is something that we design and then use the laser cutter to cut out and then, excuse me, assemble. In the middle at the top there, we've got the marble maze project where the students are designing a maze that a marble travels through for a certain amount of time, generally 10 seconds. And they're following a bunch of different constraints that they have to build around, taking themselves all the way through what we call the design process. The train project is a 3D modeling project utilizing advanced tools in Inventor, which is the software that we use for our CAD modeling. On our lower level, you'll see that there's a concept sketching activity that we do, some of our basic inventor shapes, um, another marble maze, and then we have an activity where we look at creating a catapult that works on accuracy, and it also works on distance, helping us look at data and analyzing that as part of the class. The great thing about design and drawing for production is that it is a project lead the way course. And Project Lead the Way courses have the opportunity for the students to earn college credit. The courses are through Rochester Institute of Technology and they are worth three credit hours each. The students will take an exam at the end of the year and if they attain a specific score, they are eligible to apply to RIT for the college credit. Okay, our multimedia class is a way that we can take a look in our world as it craves digital content. Um, it pays to be able to share your ideas in a quick and entertaining way. So in multimedia, we explore how to create real world projects using photos, video, audio, and digital illustrations using professional software. Currently, we are using the Adobe Creative Suite. So things that you'll explore are video editing, vector-based illustration, photo editing and correction, audio editing, and then basic video skills. So up here you can see a few examples that have been created so far. Um, we've got our photo editing and correction. We've got some digital illustrations. Just a couple of the projects that you would be experiencing while taking this class. And another thing I want to mention before I turn this over to Mr. DeLellis is we also have an engineering and tech club here. It's called the Technology Student Association, or TSA. And it meets once a week, and we co compete in tech wars competitions around the area. So. OK, good evening, everybody. My name is John DeLellis. I have about five minutes to get through 30 slides here, so hang on tight. Uh, I'm here to discuss the two classes, Energy and Aerospace, as well as Introduction to Woodworking on the one of three yellow sheets you got this evening. Uh, first class, Energy and Aerospace, Study of Modern Energy and Technology in Motion. We get into a lot of hands-on projects, such as solar collectors, electric power, uh, rocket propulsion, alternative energy projects, and hydraulic and pneumatic stuff. Uh, a couple examples here, the first one being our CO2 power cars. The bottom picture is our electric motorboats that we build and race. The windmill design project is a crowd pleaser. The students are given a little electric motor and they have to completely design a windmill to produce the most amount of electricity with just the wind from an average box fan. And one requirement is they have to 3D print something to aid with that project. We have a wide variety of different designs from a few years ago here. Uh, another big project is the robotic arm challenge. The students are given 10 syringes. After learning the principles of hydraulics and pneumatics, 
They have to design a robotic arm to move two different objects up and over 90 degrees. Sounds pretty simple, but it's actually one of the most difficult projects for that course. In the springtime, we go outside, we launch rockets, two liter lava, water bottle rockets, and they are achieving the highest hang time. They could come up with a parachute design if they want. I have a quick little video here to share with you some of the projects in motion here. So that's our robotic arm challenge up and over our compressed air cars that we race. We've done trebuchets in the past. Every year is a little bit different. Uh, the students have to hit a target at a certain distance. And those are our wind-powered sailboats. Moving forward. The next one is introduction to woodworking. This class, students are trained to use all of the hand tools and machines on this slide here. The, let's see here. So, a lot of hands-on learning. We learn the design process. We learn about machine safety, tools, and equipment. And the best part about this class is the projects the students get to take home, which is really rewarding for the students. Uh, we emphasize a measurement, understanding design, custom manufacturing, and as I mentioned, precision woodworking projects that the students could take home and enjoy for many years to come. The first project we get into is the bow balancer. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The students exercise the tools that we just learned about, such as the bandsaw, drill press, rubber table, miter saw, and so forth. Moving on to more complicated stuff, we get into cutting boards. Uh, students get very creative with this project, and it happens that these projects are done right before the holiday season, which is convenient. More examples there. We also have a laser engraver, so the students can laser engrave their name and the year, or if they have a cool picture that they want to engrave onto their projects, is always recommended. After the cutting boards, we get into wood turning. We turn pens, and we also make the cases as well, which is a lot of fun. The cases, we also engrave the names on the front, so it's a really nice piece of, uh, really nice project for the students to take home. We make the cases on what's called a CNC router. All the students are trained how to use this properly, and you can make really intricate cuts and designs with this piece of equipment. We've done bandsaw boxes in the past. Here are a couple more examples of some creative ones. And the second half of the year is our mass production project. So every year we vote on a project that we want to do. This class we did Adirondack chairs. We have also done the East Side newspaper boxes as seen in the second floor and in the commons. And another picture of that. We've done dorm room stools before. Last year and a couple years before, we've done trestle benches. These benches turn out really, really nice. Uh, the classes split into groups of three. Each group of three will design and build a certain part of it, and then every student gets to take theirs home after they assemble it. We've done games in the past. After students graduate introduction to woodworking, they could go on to advanced woodworking or construction systems or come up with their own projects that they want to design and build once their skills are a little bit better after intro. Uh, here's just some course offerings related to manufacturing, some colleges, and careers that you would come across with, with this, what I call lifelong knowledge. Uh, information that students will take with them the rest of their life. And with that being said, hope to see you in 2024. I will pass it over to business. Good evening, how's everybody doing tonight? Uh, as far as business education, uh, we like to refer as business education as a class for everyone. 
Uh, myself, Mr. Malerski, we actually started in the business industry, and we always feel no matter what your interests are, no matter what you're doing in life, basically business is going to prepare you for those situations. Think about it, how you handle your bank accounts, how you handle your credit cards, uh, basically how you apply for a job, all deals with business. So I'd like to introduce our staff. There we go, very slow moving, okay. Basically, we have four teachers. On the far left, you can see Mrs. Mahaney, Mr. Merlerski, Mrs. Fenero, and myself, Mr. Pawlowski. Uh, even though we all look extremely young, basically, we have over 100 years of teaching experience combined. So we have been for, around for a while, and we have a lot of knowledge. Simultaneously, we all came from the business industry. So basically, we're all averaging over nine years of experience in the outside world before we actually became business education teachers. So that being said, we like to offer our practical knowledge, our skills, to you for your pathways. As I stated, if you take a business class, it's for everyone. You're going to use those skills for the rest of your life, whether they're communication skills, they're transferable skills, basically even how to start jobs, how to, like I said, get jobs, how to do leadership skills. So you, as young students entering high school for the first time, need to figure out what your interests are, what your path is going to be. We want to help guide you with that. I will talk about the first two classes we believe are the best for you to take, and then Mr. Malerski will talk about the rest of the possibilities you can do in business. So of the two classes, we highly recommend either computer, or computer applications or intro to business. In computer applications, you can see on the graph on the far left there, basically since 1995, when Microsoft Office first came out, that is the business software used to this date. Yes, Google has come along, but what major businesses use Google? Still, all your biggest businesses, even the industry I came from, UPS, puts everything on Microsoft Office, so it's secured. And now even Microsoft Office does actually allow stuff to be saved to the cloud. So they are just as compatible, if not better, than Google. Gives you a lot more features. Simultaneously, look at all the skills that you will develop. Problem solving, critical thinking, talking, communicating, everything that an employer looks for. When you go to apply for a job, it's not, what are you going to do for me? The company wants to know what you are going to do for them. And that's what we like to teach you. Simultaneously, if you take intro to business as the other option, same concept. We will teach you a general overview of all business perspectives. Everything from owning a business, to using credit cards, to getting insurance. Who here wants to own a car when you're 18? Ah, mom and dad are going to tell you, you need to pay for the insurance. You're going, what? I have to pay for something? We want you to be prepared for life, OK? Because eventually, you're not going to be living in mom and dad's house anymore, OK? And trust me, I have three kids of my own. I'm waiting for them to move out. We're also going to teach you study skills, how to master school, how to apply the things you learn in our class for the rest of your life. So I'll let Mr. Malerski handle the rest. Thank you. All right. So, so I'll continue um, by talking about some of the opportunities that you would have maybe as a sophomore, junior, or senior with some upper level uh, business classes. You can see there, um, from the intro to business class, you'll maybe spend a chapter or two on each of these subjects. But if there's something that really piques your interest, you can again pursue that with some higher level courses uh, in accounting. Uh, the SUPA classes, you may have heard that term SUPA stands for Syracuse University Project Advance. So we have the articulation agreement for uh, the advanced accounting course with Syracuse University. It talked about the new step, which is Niagara University. So all of the departments really have some sort of a connection to local colleges um, to give you folks an opportunity to, to get a step ahead uh, with your credits and even save some money on tuition down the road. A lot of the courses that we offer, again, entrepreneurship, youth leadership, things like that, will offer you an opportunity to uh, develop your soft skills. Again, Mr. Pawlowski said that, you know, employers don't just want to, you know, use your knowledge. They need you to have interpersonal skills. There's a lot of interaction between people that takes place in the business world. And so to have good communication skills is critical to be successful. And that even comes out in the interview. 
Um, and so we try to help with those skills along the way in a lot of these upper level courses. Specifically, offering you college credit, um, I offer uh, two accounting classes, one through the uh, SUNY school system. So there's the accounting one, a three college credit option, and the SUPA is a four college credit option through Syracuse University. There typically is a reduced tuition involved. For the SUNY courses, it's one third of the tuition. So any of the courses that are offered through what they call the um, advanced studies program, you pay one credit hour to receive three college credits. So basically you're paying about $275 by taking a three college credit course here in high school. If you took that same course on the campus, it'd be 900. The one I like to use for comparison is Syracuse University. If you take the SUPA accounting class with me, here in school it's $425 for four college credits. If you took it at Syracuse University, financial accounting, ACC 151, it's $7,000. It's the same course, it's the same content at a very reduced rate. So thinking ahead, I know you're only in eighth grade right now, but maybe as juniors and seniors to plan your futures, think about taking these college level courses in high school. And I had a daughter graduated with a degree in accounting, go figure, she graduated in three and a half years because of the college credits that she took while in high school. So again, saved a whole two, uh, semester of tuition, room, and board, and graduated in December of her senior year, which was an ideal time for her to get hired in the tax practice um, for January. So think about that. You can even reduce your college load um, in the future. Computer applications, another course um, that we offer for college credit. College and career communications. Again, I know you're not thinking about going to college. You're only talking about getting into high school. But we offer courses that will prepare you for success um, beyond high school as well. One of the options you can consider also is taking a five unit sequence in business. Um, so again, if you're coming in as a freshman, you could take one class as a freshman, maybe two as a sophomore, one as a junior, a couple as a senior. So we have students that really spend a lot of time in our department um, and again would consider taking the five unit business sequence. If you live in the district, you may have seen articles in the paper about the Future Business Leaders of America, FBLA. It's one of the largest student organizations here in the high school with probably about 130 members. Um, so about 15% of the, the student population is um, involved in FBLA. Again, an opportunity to build on your soft skills, your communication skills, but also to start to develop your resume, which again, you might need for a job, applying to the colleges. It's not too soon to start thinking about what you can do as a freshman to build your resume to make you more attractive to employers or colleges. Um, you can be as involved in the club as you wish to. You can be a student officer. You can be a local officer here in our chapter. We have state level officers and national level officers. So again, opportunities for you to really get involved and build your uh, soft skills and your resume. FBLA gives you a chance to, I guess, let your knowledge of certain business subjects shine. There are local competitions, state competitions, and national competitions. Uh, we travel nationally to the big cities like Orlando, Denver, Chicago, LA, Dallas, and again, with advanced success in certain subjects and uh, competitions, you could uh, possibly do that as well. A couple of testimonials, I don't need to read those for you, but some things that our existing uh, ninth graders have said about the computer applications courses and or the intro to business classes, the skills that they learned in those classes can also be used in other classes throughout high school. So as Mr. Pawlowski said, you know, if we teach you how to use Excel and how to create graphs and charts, that's something that you can also use in your science classes for your labs and things like that. So again, a lot of transferable skills we try to give you as well. Some more testimonials. And this is a slide actually of students that are involved in the Career Exploration Internship Program, CEIP gives students an opportunity to get some real-world experience. They complete non-paid internships for school credit. 
And I think the one on the far left is M&T Bank. The one in the middle at the top is an advertising agency. Down below it is the Nano Satellite Lab at the University at Buffalo. And then the far right, you could see it's actually uh, the Bills Stadium. Um, student was doing an internship in sports management. That's all I got. Thanks for listening. Hope to see you next year. Up here. Hello, my name is Annika Aida. I am the orchestra teacher. Let me introduce you to our, uh, my fantastic colleagues. Um, here we have Ellen Romando, who is chorus and theory, Cassandra Gerzon, chorus and theory, Tom McCluskey, band and jazz band, and uh, Mr. Buckley, who is not here tonight, who is also band and jazz band. Uh, that's not it. What do I do? There we go. Our district has an extremely high rate of participation in fourth grade, in the high 90s uh, percent of our fourth graders participate in band and orchestra. So I feel like most of you really know the benefits of music. I don't think we need to talk to you about that, um, the, the power of music on the brain. I don't feel like we need to talk to you about the program here, the quality of our program. We have outstanding band orchestras and choruses, but I don't really want to choose to talk about that either. What I want to talk to you about is why you should stay involved in music in high school. Having that four-year commitment uh, to music is a sign of a very well-rounded student. Uh, it's important to have that creative outlet in your day as a student here at, in high school, but I think also as adults, we need creative outlets of every kind. It's really essential. Being that well-rounded student, having a four-year commitment to music um, in high school is also something that college boards are looking for. Students that not only participate, but really stick out, stick it out, who really stay with it and have a, have a commitment, like I said. Last of all, our music department has a tremendous sense of community. Um, it is where students begin the day often and end the day. It's the friendships that they have built with each other that really last a lifetime. Um, so it's that sense of community in our music department um, for which I think we are all extremely proud. Go ahead. Um, our ensembles meet every day here, except for Coraliers and Dynamics, which I think are every other day. Um, so that's a big difference than music um, in, in the middle school, where it's every other day. So our progress, rate of progress, is very, very fast, I feel. Um, all students, including chorus, receive one lesson per week. We have four concerts per year or one uh, per marking period. Any ensemble or music theory fulfills the New York requirement for one arts or music credit needed for graduation. Um, you, it says a requirement of one credit, but we hope you certainly do more. Um, and we have absolutely gorgeous uh, facilities, state-of-the-art facilities, band, chorus, and orchestra rooms, and music theory. Um, something really interesting about our department that I really love being a part of is the collaboration across the band, orchestra, and chorus. So um, I don't know if any of you came to Winterfest, but um, when I was in high school, I didn't have any experience like that where the chorus was able to sing with a full orchestra and the orchestra was able to accompany different solo singers and different small groups. And it's just a really, really great environment for students and the staff. Um, the musical is another great opportunity for collaboration. We have a full, fully student pit usually, um, and we have students from all across the school that join the musical and get to be a part, get a little taste of the music department, and a lot of them end up sticking around. Um, we also have dancers and um, students who lead the show behind the scenes as part of stage crew, um, doing the soundboard, lighting, all that kind of stuff. So definitely lots of opportunities for all kinds of students in the musical. Um, we also have biannual music trips um, that we do as a department together. Um, we go to different cities and have different cultural arts experiences. Um, students also usually get the opportunity to participate in master classes with different, co different college professors, um, which is a really amazing opportunity for our students. 
And this is a picture of our Cleveland trip last year. We have two orchestras here, Symphony Orchestra and Philharmonic. Symphony is um, an audition group. We play at a level five or level six NISMA. Um, if your student is interested in that, um, it definitely requires an audition, which we will coordinate um, uh, at the end of January. That's during our midterms week. Um, and we also have full orchestra for both groups, which means that we join with uh, wind and percussion players, which is really a great experience. For Philharmonic Orchestra, there's no audition required. Um, we play a variety of different levels of music, and it's really for anyone in their um, ability. Um, in fact, uh, one student started freshman year um, having never played before and uh, currently is playing at a very high level. Um, like I said, we practice every day, and that really makes a difference. Um, Um, we have four choruses here that are um, curricular classes. So um, Corlears and Dynamics, which we already said uh, meet every other day, are newer ensembles. Dynamics is brand new to East um, next year. It is a 9th through 12th grade ensemble that meets every other day. Um, and it is by audition or by teacher recommendation. Um, and it's open to any tenor or bass that is interested in singing. Um, and if your child does not know what part they sing or you don't, you're not sure what they sing, feel free to ask us or ask their chorus teacher. Um, Coraliers is also a 9th through 12th um, grade ensemble that meets every other day, and that is for um, sopranos and altos, and that is also by audition or teacher recommendation. Um, our other two ensembles, so we felt it was important for students to have the opportunity to sing in a mixed ensemble with all different voices and also in an ensemble with like voices just for um, the purposes of growing their voices and their musicianship. So mixed chorus and chorale are the two um, ensembles with mixed voices. So uh, mixed chorus is 9 through 12. It meets every day. Anyone is able to join mixed chorus without an audition. Um, we sing around a level, a NISMA level 3 or 4. And then Corral is our auditioned ensemble for 10th through 12th grade students, and it meets every day. This is our upper level ensemble. It sings more at a level five or six. Okay, so on the band side, we have a couple of different ensembles available. Wind Ensemble and Concert Band. Wind Ensemble is the audition ensemble. It meets first thing in the morning. Every day we start our, our morning off with music. Um, it's uh, aggressive in the music that we go after. We play Nisava level five and six. Uh, concert band, it's a little bit lighter, it's open to everybody. Um, if you want to play an instrument, even if you haven't played one before, a lot of times we can find a place for you in concert band, so you're all welcome to, to try out and, um, or actually not try out, you could just show up and we'll, we'll find a place for you. Um, we also offer uh, different jazz programs too. We have a jazz band that we call FM Jazz, it meets on Friday mornings before school. Um, that's a non-audition group, anyone can play. If you're interested in learning how to play jazz, it's just a cool place to come and hang out, play some jazz music in the morning, get your day started. Uh, jazz Ensemble is a, a curricular course that meets during the day. It's for credit, a half credit. Um, it meets every other day, and it goes along with um, Jazz Improv, which meets every other day. So one focuses on teaching the skills of improvisation, and the other focuses on applying those skills that you learn. And then we also have a vocal jazz ensemble, um, did you want to talk about that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, vocal jazz is our extracurricular um, choral ensemble. It meets on Tuesdays and Thursday mornings at 7 a.m. Um, it is by audition, and it's open to 10th through 12th graders, and they audition for that in early September. They sing um, a variety of jazz pieces and also pop music. Um, we also offer music theory here at East. Um, so with uh, last year was the first year we actually offered um, a college credit for music theory through a partnership with Buffalo State. So uh, music theory, we recommend you have a little bit of a music background before taking the class, but it is open to any student, 9 through 12. Um, no prerequisite classes are required. We just recommend that you've at least played an instrument at some point in your life or really like listening to music. Um, it's broken into two sections. We have written theory and then we have oral skills, um, which is dictation and ear training. Um, so more of like uh, applicable singing, that kind of stuff. Um, this class is a prerequisite to take AP Music Theory, which is also offered here. Um, so students are able to take, get one credit for Music Theory through Buffalo State and then another credit um, for AP Music Theory. Um, we encourage m Music Theory and AP Music Theory for students that want to be in our advanced ensembles like Chorale, Symphony, and Wind Ensemble. 
Um, we also have a five uh, five unit track like business and um, the other electives here um, where if students stay in music any ensemble for four years they can kind of mix and match the ensembles so four years of an ensemble and then one year of music theory that also fulfills that um, that five unit track for our regents um, with the advanced regents diploma and that's it <laughs> thank you <laughs> This will be our last presentation before our tours. Good evening, everybody, and welcome, class of 2028. I'm Mrs. Crean, and this is Ms. Lukey, and we're the art teachers here at East, and tonight we're gonna present two art classes to you that satisfy the cultural art requirement that you need for graduation. One is studio and art, and one is studio and photography. So why might you want to set up for the art classes? First of all, um, all through middle school, you only get about 10 weeks of art per grade level. You get to come to us every day, all year. Your skills, like in music, they were saying, they grow. You grow really fast. We get to work every single day. You might just enjoy being in a hands-on environment where making and creating every day. Maybe you want to do a portfolio and build a portfolio for a specific art major, or even if you're thinking about architecture, fashion design, um, industrial design, something like that, gaming design, animation. In fact, we're going to talk a little bit at the end about a new course that we're going to be offering, a full year animation course next year. AP Studio and Art, um, maybe a supplement to a college application. A lot of colleges like to see, again, like with music, that you have a passion for something beyond just academic studies and maybe an art minor scholarship. We've actually had students receive thousands of dollars in scholarships just with their art minor. So studio and art is prerequisite for studio and drawing and painting, which sometimes we call art too, graphic design, studio and sculpture and ceramics, and the art and craft of animation. So the last three classes that I mentioned, students have the option of receiving a college credit with those classes. So they're doing the same work as the student next to them, but they can double dip if they want and get a high school credit and a college credit for a fraction of the cost. I know when my own children come home from their school and they've brought me the sheet to sign, I always immediately sign it right over because I know how much, now that two of them are in college, how much it costs to take that same class at a college. And studio and uh, photography is the prerequisite for both um, advanced drawing, I'm sorry, <laughs> advanced uh, studio and photography and graphic design. And graphic design is another one of those advanced studies courses that offer you that SUNY college credit, which is basically an elective credit for any, it counts towards um, any elective in college. I forgot I'm going to talk about this one too. So we like to show this slide just to show you all the careers out there. If you are a visual person, you just love art and you want to create, there's so many more opportunities besides just an art teacher or an architect. Not that there's anything wrong with an art teacher. Um, but there's so many different things from, an, you could design sneakers, design cars, you could design interiors, you could be a photographer, studio lighting and set design, so many different options. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about studio and art. As, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, it does satisfy the cultural art requirement needed for graduation. Um, studio and art, we kind of dabble and experiment with a lot of different media materials that you see up here. We try to really build students' skills. Don't, you don't need to have like this talent that you think you know that you've got all this previous knowledge or drawing skills. We teach you all that when you come in. So we talk about how to mix paints. We talk about how to shade, how to work three-dimensionally with clay. And we also introduce you to Adobe Photoshop in the photo room. Um, drawing unit, we start with in the beginning of the year. And again, we're teaching you these basic drawing skills, how to draw from real life, how to draw realistically. Um, and we get into shading also, as you can see. We work with everything from pencil to pastel to pen and ink. The clay and mass design unit, the students are just finishing up right now in the studio and art class. And for this project, they research a culture 
and incorporate some of those characteristics from that culture's masks into their own design. And in that design, they have to have patterns and different textures. And then, then we take it a step further, and they actually make their mask in clay and make it three-dimensional. And then we go through the whole process. We let it dry out, we fire it, the students get to glaze it, and then we fire it again, and they get to take these products home. The painting unit, again, we teach you about color theory, and up on the top right, you can see there's different painting techniques that we teach you before we jump right into creating a painting on a piece of canvas. So students eventually get there and they create this beautiful painting with their own design and they have to incorporate some of those techniques that we teach them into their painting. We also do a watercolor unit in the beginning of the year. The Photoshop lesson, students draw some images on their own and then we take pictures with their phones and then we airdrop them to the Mac computers in the photo room. And then we talk about surrealism, and students create the surrealist background for their objects. Printmaking unit, we do reduction prints often in studio, where we are reducing the block more and more so that we can get as many colors on there as possible. And then we have a final project in May where students get to pick a project that they want to work on using some of the media materials that were introduced to them during the year. All right, studio and photography. So in this class, we get to work with both the traditional film cameras and digital SLRs. We talk about how they're kind of, all the things that we learn in the film cameras apply to the most expensive, fanciest um, DSLRs and even um, mirrorless cameras now. And so what the students do is we focus on composition, taking pictures in your backyard, but like really thinking about how to make even just a simple, um, backyard photograph, beautiful. We talk about Photoshop. We learn how to work in the dark room and develop our own pictures. Um, this, we just like to include this, and you're welcome to stop by. We have the rooms all open. But we, on the top here, we have our classroom, and then it attaches to our dark room. You can see one of our students coming out of the dark room. So the students are constantly moving um, in and out of the dark room on the computers. We have a lot going on in the class, and um, below you can see the dark room. Again, with film, we're looking at how to control and manipulate what the viewer sees. So we talk a lot about different techniques, like creating um, like portrait mode on your phones, shallow depth of field, great depth of field, how to stop action, how to blur action. Again, we're applying these to both the DSLRs and our film cameras. By the way, you do not need a film camera or a DSLR to take this. We have cameras to loan. Um, again, with composition, it's about how to create beautiful images with just what we have around us. We're not going anywhere, like we're not going to Paris or Toronto or anywhere really fancy, but how to create really beautiful pictures just in our own backyards. We'll experiment in the darkroom. We take the processes that we would easily be able to do in Photoshop or in digital software, and we work with them in the darkroom. We're going to start doing that pretty soon. Um, long exposures, we talk about playing with light and light painting. The students just finished up a light painting unit, which was really fun, so you'll see some of those images out in the hallway. And then in the spring, we usually go on a field trip downtown. That's where some of these pictures were taken, and we talk about, again, long exposures and blurring action. And we also work with um, Photoshop here and do so many different types of projects, learning how to use that software in an artistic way. And then just really quickly, we wanted to show you some examples of our art courses and dance level courses. Do you want to go or do you want to go? Oh, here, she can talk about this. <laughs> okay, so studio and drawing and painting, I'll, again, we sometimes call this art too. Um, we basically, it's just like studio and art, you start here, and then drawing and painting is the next level. So it's just something that they would take sophomore year or any year, actually. Um, and we just talk a lot more in depth about interesting compositions and um, you know what makes up an interesting piece of artwork. And then we dabble in different medium materials just on the next level. And then with advanced studio and drawing and painting, we take it a little bit further and start, students start to find their unique voice and start to develop ideas for the possibility of going into an AP portfolio from there. We have AP Studio and Art, which I've had both uh, traditional drawing and painting students submit portfolios as well as my photography students. I've had many students score well um, in their advanced uh, 2D design portfolio for photography. 
And here's some examples of advanced photo, which is another option after studio and photo. And again, we just push it further and try to get students to create their own unique voice in their images. Graphic design, we work with image and text. You can see here, maybe you've seen some of these images or some of these graphics around the, um, the school and around the district. The Reach Out logo was designed by one of my students the first year we had the graphic design class. The art um, department logo was designed by one of my students. The Carry the Torch is my favorite uh, t-shirt that we have here, was designed by one of my students. We do the district art show invite. Maybe some of you have been in it and received the invite. Those were designed by my students. As well as every year, we do the program cover for um, Winterfest. I'm trying to go fast. So sculpture and ceramics, we obviously work three-dimensionally with everything from plaster to metal to clay in that class. And that is offered every other year. So you want to really plan for that if you want to take it. On the off years, graphic design is offered. So I'm teaching sculpture this year, and Ms. Lukey will be teaching graphic design next year. Um, the art and craft of animation, that is a SUPA course through Syracuse University, so you could potentially get college credit for that. And we teach you the basics of animation from stopping action and having you have a creative voice through moving objects. I'll just show you a few seconds of this. And then Exploring Arts, another course that we have is an advanced elective, which we'll talk more about. It's more about art history and creating artworks in a collaborative way based on the artists that we're learning in the class. And we hope to see you down in the hallway if you have any questions. Thank you so much. See you guys next year. Before everyone gets up and, and goes on the tour, I just want to give a couple uh, pointers and tips. If you're interested in the music wing, you go out to uh, Student Street, you go to the right. All the rest of the electives, you'd go to Student Street and make a left through the Commons, and they're on the first uh, floor. Foreign language is on the second floor. You're welcome to go to the second and third floor to see the academic uh, departments. School counselors and the main office are also on the second floor. If you need elevator access, we have that in the Commons as well. Thank you. Can't get over how good it is. Oh, where do we turn this off? Oh, there's a little red button on the bottom, so let's press it. Oh, right here. You can barely see it. Okay. It doesn't. You just have to hit it and then.